guess where we are. And look what's going on here. Quite busy. Quite busy. So we will move slowly and cautiously. And hopefully the bees will let us use their beehives for a tripod a while longer. So. Hi kids. Sorry I didn't update for quite a while. Last week was so bitterly cold and rainy and awful. It was just ugh, awful. And uh, still getting up to, up to speed on being at home all the time from the pandemic. It's really, I don't know. But we're here. We're going to do some more Tai Chi. I had a request to go on in the form. So let's go on in the form. It's very sunny. I hope you can see me. And don't laugh at my sunglasses. I, f I found them in the road, okay? I found them in the road. So I don't even need, need this. Let's review. Let's review. Can you see me? We start. Again. Next move, weight right, palm, make a circle, weight left, weight right, circle, turn, and sit down, relax, knee, Open. Sit down. Wait forward. Wait back. Sink. Open the gate. Come through. Sit down. Relax. One. Two. Pull the knee up. Facing this way. Palm. Press down. G. Lift up. Lu. You can even come up on your toes. Lu. And palm. Open the chest. Press down. Body straight. Weight left. Weight right. Weight left. Weight right. Weight left up. Weight 
weight right. Big circle. Press down, weight left. Turn out the foot. Come through with the heel first. Weight left. Forward. Down. On your balance. Little circle. Bam. Second move. Second move. If you recall, weight is left, weight goes right, left, right, get your shoulder around, get your ribs around, turn, circle, circle, left arm, right arm, Open. Sit down. Bam. Forward. Weight left. Weight right. Weight left. Relax. Close. Close. Open. Weight left. Relax. Let the weight go into the left foot. Relax. Open the chest. Hands are forward. Leg back. Both hands are up. Right arm level. Left arm traces down. diagonally and then you sit down weight right and you complete the movement by rounding the elbow and you turn and that brings your weight left third movement no let's do that again from here Weight left, weight right, weight left, weight right, weight left, close left, open right, turn out the left foot, boom, on your leg, boom, weight back, I, sorry, leg back, wind up a little bit, and then unwind. Don't let your hand go past your foot or your elbow past your knee. Then sit down and you'll feel this elbow will bring you onto your left leg from where we will wind a cloud hand And an elbow circle, and again, bring your ribs around, bring your elbow forward. There's a little weight shift. You could play with a big weight shift, like you're on a boat on the waves. Come down and up supporting something here. Come down and up. Left hand comes in closer to you and you wipe off the front and you follow your left elbow, your right elbow. You follow your right elbow to the right 
Let the arm bring you to the left. Turn the hands up. And stroke an imaginary long white beard. Ending with your hands. Ending with your hands. Here. Here. So that's where we got to. Can you even see? Can you hear? We'll keep going. From here. Circle. Wait left. Wait right. Did I blow that? I did. No. <laughs> okay. Circle. Come back. Call. Let's try that again. Second move. Wait left up. Wait right. Wait left up. Open the chest. Right. Come back. Send it forward. Now, just imagine somebody, you're a big ball, and somebody bounces into you. You bounce them off. Bounce them off. Make a small, smaller circles. Sweep down. Wait left. Wait right. Wait left. Stroke the long white beard. Next move. From long white beard. Your weight is right. Your left heel is up a bit. Can you see? I can't, I don't know. Okay. Your left heel is up, your weight is right. You do use the ball of the left foot to help you keep your balance and to help you send your weight into the right leg. You use that. So now, when in doubt, relax. Relax. Now we have walk like an Egyptian, yes? The right hand, the right wrist leads up over the foot, not back here, not here, over the foot, and the elbow is down. So it's kind of like a pump handle. You have an old-fashioned pump. From You've just stroked the long white beard. Your right arm opens like a pump handle. And your left arm is like another pump handle, but it doesn't open very far. So both arms, once they relax, they both move. They're both moving. It's not that the right arm moves and the left arm is dangling. Okay, so so from from the long from the long white beard, the arms relax down. I know you can't see me. <laughs> you turn your body towards your right leg, and the arms they separate. They separate. They separate, and then they close. This pump handle closes in front of your midline, and this arm closes in front of your midline, about at your chest. So, you've opened, you've relaxed, first of all. 
Then you turn and open and close. And now the left arm wards off and makes a circle. And the right arm catches up. So a simple way to do it would be to just open together. So let's do that. Let's do that. The arms come down. You're relaxed. You palm. You close. So this one has to do something, right? So that they can open together. Palm. Close. Open. A circle. Make a circle. However, when we do it that way, notice that the, the left hand kind of gets left left all alone again. So it has to keep moving. You want it to keep moving. Which would eventually lead us to opening the left, opening the right, close, opening both together, close. So, again, ich wiederhole. You've got your long white beard. You relax. Weight is right. Pull silk, pull silk. Close. Protect with your right, left. Protect with your left, protect with your right, close, open both, together, open both, open both. Finish that by turning again towards your right leg with an uneven arm. The un arms are uneven in a line and then you're going to grab a, a hair, a soapy hair in the shower and you're going to pull the soapy hair off your arm along your arm to what's called grasping bird's tail i have also had my students rename it picking up the dead mouse and pulling the tea bag out of the teacup this hand position is relaxed, the elbow is down, it's like a hook. And what the fingers that are grasping are the first three, one, two, three. And the other two are together, but they're not trying to hold the tea bag with all five fingertips. You're just holding the tea bag or the mouse tail or the bird's tail with three fingertips, and the other ones are relaxed but joined to the rest of the hand. And you can feel for yourself. If you try to close the little finger and the ring finger and the middle finger, it creates a tension in the hand. It's not very comfortable. So we want it to be comfortable, comfortable, comfortable. But you don't want to leave your pinky hanging out like 4T because somebody could grab it, a, very not, a not very nice person, and break it. So you always want to have your little finger together with your next finger. Usually want all our fingers together. Not stiffly, but they're friends, okay? So, from long white beard, relax and sink. Turn and open like an Egyptian. Close, open, open. Close, open, close, pull the silk. How high? Not high. About to the level of your shoulder. Sink. Here again, you've, you're holding your baby bird. Your baby bird on your navel there. 
boom. Okay, ready for the next move? Be on your right leg. Left heel up. You're sunk. You find your right side. And you lift your leg. Make a knee circle. And aim it out a little bit on the diagonal. Ha! Weight stays right. Now, open like you're asking for change. Change, spare change. Now come back and scoop, go around your dan chin from pubic bone to the sternal notch there. Bomb. Cover your, your fingers and pull a line. And the weight goes from the right to the left. And you sit down on the left. Now that move is called the general surveys the carnage. Okay, so the general is on his horse and he surveys the carnage and sits back down on his horse. When you sit down, if you drop this wrist, your right wrist, doink, a little bit, it'll set down your elbow, your shoulder, and it'll put you right down into your left hip, into your left quad, okay? So, we'll go up to there. From the long white beard, Facing your right leg. I forgot that <laughs> because that got added later. We'll go over that. So, one thing. One thing that Master Fong did that I thought was pretty brilliant, um, because I don't know how long he, he taught classes, but gosh, I think he died when he was 84. A long time. But when he developed his Hunyuan form, um, he developed, I mean, there was, there's the 83, there's the 48, there's the 24, there's the 24 canon, there's the 72, there's the, I mean, there's lots and lots of forms. However, he did an interesting thing with um, some of his forms that I noticed when my teacher, Master Zhang, would go back once a year to China to study with his master, um, he would come back and say, Master Feng has changed this movement. So Master Feng would add a movement. He would, it's sort of like he would edit in another movement. And what I began to realize over the years is it was it was kind of a way a marker and you would know he would know up until what point someone studied with him so he kept changing things and so if you didn't have the most recent <laughs> version um, it was kind of like well you 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 studied with in this time frame so it, it was very interesting um, and my teacher did study with him up until Fong passed away. So um, I think we have all the, all the changes. Um, and that's what artists do, right? They, con they continually update and cross out and, and edit and re rework their work. And, and Fong was, was truly, truly an artist, and a martial artist. Um, so back to our movement. Close, 
ward off with the left, ward off with the right. Now something very beautiful with, about this movement that might help you is that you are drawing, you're painting with your hands in the air this, the yin-yang symbol. And that is throughout this form. And I'll leave it up to you to discover that because it's really quite exciting when you discover it on your own. But I'll just give you that, that clue right there. Can you imagine that yin-yang circle was just described there? Then there's a second circle. Then our original, original in the early 90s <laughs> was this version. In 2006, in 2005 or 2006, a new move got added. And that was the palms passing and the palms passing. They turn and they pass and they turn and they pass. And you turn with them to the left and to the right. So if we want to have the most updated version of the Hunyuan 24, we will add that. Ward off, ward off, close, open, turn, not touching, but about there. Now, you're going to turn, and as you turn, you bring your hands in front of your Danqian. The left hand turns up and the right hand turns down, and they pass. It's like you're rolling a ball in between your hands. You roll the ball, you turn to the left, you roll the ball, and you turn to the right. And your stance is alive, you're turning, you're turning, the pelvis turns, the chest stays, uh, the chest and the navel all stay aligned, so you don't twist, you don't twist, you turn the pelvis, you turn the pelvis, the legs are alive, the weight is still on the right, you will get a very strong right thigh. Actually, both legs will become just no problem. You'll be able to ride a bicycle for hundreds of miles and never get tired. Um, when I first started taking Tai Chi, I, I had to push my bicycle home through Golden Gate Park because I couldn't walk after a private lesson. But one day, that will all go away. So where were we? We were opening in the yin-yang symbol, opening again, closing, turning and rolling a ball. Now we can pull the long soapy hair right out of the crook of your elbow. Pull, sink. When you sink, make sure that your wrist is level with your shoulder, You're still on your right leg. I don't know what you can see. I feel like I'm a hundred miles away from the camera. Okay, here you are. Get on your horse, open a little bit back. Pop, so you're on a diagonal. Open, ask for change. Wait right, circle. There's that elbow again. It will help you turn, you want See, the whole point is to make yourself into a ball that, that turns and rolls in all directions while remaining upright on your hip joints. So, for some people, this comes naturally because they're already shaped like a ball. And, and these people really can excel at Tai Chi. <laughs> Other people, such as myself, are more like a whip. Um, so, it's a little more difficult for us to round ourselves out. We really have to work at it, but it can be done. So where were we? Um, ah, we were getting on our horse, getting on our horse. Open a little back and the weight stays right. You've still got your baby chick here. Now you're going to open, 
but not past your leg. Not back here. Look what that would do. Oh my God. So open, scoop, like you're going around a pregnant belly. My teacher used to say, uh, tiggy baby. You have a tiggy baby. You move around the tiggy baby. Go around. Cover this hand. As this hand raises to meet this hand, this hand comes to meet it. So it doesn't stay out here and making you reach all the way over. You compromise. It's about in front of your qua, your right hip joint. So, after you've gone around your tiggy baby, this elbow folds a little bit, then both arms go away from each other and you initiate that from the ground. The right foot pushes and you're, you turn your ball because remember, you are a ball. You turn, you survey the carnage and you sit down by sinking your right wrist. You sink your left wrist as well. But I think because this movement is bigger, it registers larger in the brain. So, pull the silk, pull the silk, and sit down. And there we go. Which brings us next to the transition. And you know how difficult transitions are. <laughs> so we'll save that for next time. Um, thank you very much. I love you all. I miss everybody. I don't know how I'm going to cope with all this shutdown stuff, but at least I can be outside. I hope you can too, wherever you are. And I hope it's beautiful wherever you are. And um, Hola, until we meet again. Bye.